Now on KGW News, unbelievable day in our nation's capital. We're talking with Oregon Congress members who were inside as a mob stormed the building. This is really a, a, an attempted coup. And Portlanders who were at the pro-Trump rally as it turned to chaos. What I did see today was a bunch of people felt like they have been unheard. While smaller rallies echoed from our state capitals. Your news starts now. And we begin tonight with this live look from the House floor where Congress has reconvened following a chaotic day at the U.S. Capitol. They're still there after a mob supporting President Trump stormed the Capitol building on the day Congress is set to confirm Joe Biden's victory in the presidential election, a process that is now underway once again. Thank you for joining us. I'm Laurel Porter. And I'm Dan Haggerty. Four people are dead after all this, while others around the country and the world are shocked by what happened. Alice Barr takes us through what happened today in Washington. The nation's capital on lockdown tonight, under curfew, hours after the U.S. Capitol and democracy itself came under siege. One woman was fatally shot and three others died of unspecified medical emergencies in three hours of chaos after a mob of supporters of President Trump and his false claims about the election surrounded and then stormed the Capitol. The drama unfolded this afternoon as lawmakers had just begun the traditional process of counting electoral votes, confirming Joe Biden's victory as the next president. Vice President Mike Pence and members of the House and Senate forced to take cover as rioters rushed past heavily armed officers, in many cases virtually unchallenged. Some made their way into the well of the House and the Senate, defiantly standing their ground in a place where elected officials had been doing their work only minutes earlier. One lawmaker likened it to crashing the gate of the People's House. President-elect Biden had harsher words. It's not protest. It's insurrection. President Trump said little to defuse the powder keg, but after lawmakers returned to count the votes, Vice President Pence led several Republicans in condemning the mob. To those who wreaked havoc in our capital today, you did not win. They tried to disrupt our democracy. They failed. The mood clearly changed, the Senate rejecting challenges to the counts in Arizona and Pennsylvania, and then adjourning, cutting off further debate. An unforgettable day on Capitol Hill, and a dark one in this nation's history. The police officer. Alice Barr reporting for us tonight. Uh, there is an update for you as well. Four people, again, actually died during the chaos today. In addition to the woman who was shot by Capitol Police, three others died in what they're calling medical emergencies. Tonight we're hearing from two Oregonians who were in the thick of the madness in D.C. Neither of the men condoned what they witnessed, but as they told our Mike Benner, they say there were more peaceful demonstrators at the Capitol than violent ones. Uh, so went ahead and bought a ticket last minute to come here. I had no idea I was going to witness what I witnessed today, though. No idea. Eric Post is in disbelief over what he witnessed in our nation's capital. The Portland man is in Washington, D.C., working on a future documentary. He says the day started peacefully with speeches from the president and Rudy Giuliani, among others. It was packed. I mean, I'm talking that crowd is just massive, massive, massive. Vibes were excellent. That excellence gave way to mayhem, according to Post. He says he heard rumblings of people moving towards the Capitol building. Post moved that way as well. He says the crowd jumped a fence and overwhelmed police. Cops were beating protesters. Uh, protesters were beating cops. Uh, no different than Portland. CS gas was deployed. Uh, pepper spray was deployed. I got shot with pepper balls. I mean, just everything was going on today. Um, no different than in Portland, although it was just on a, a pretty intense scale. As awful as it was, Post says the number of people who engaged in the violence both inside and outside of the Capitol paled in comparison to the masses trying to stop it. 20-year-old Ish Espino of Salem agrees. I came to D.C. honestly to show everybody and like the nation that Trump has not lost his support. Espino traveled to the East Coast to protest what he believes was a fraudulent election. These are some of his photos. Espino watched the violence from afar but did not engage in it. I personally don't really condone it. I think it went a little too far. But the people are fed up of all this. That much was clear to Eric Post, who walks away from all of this embarrassed, if nothing else. Not for just the United States, but just 
having witnessed the underside of humanity again and again and again. And, um, you know, today is a representation that um, when people don't feel like they're being led properly or they don't feel like they're given a fair chance, they will act out. And um, it should be no surprise that this is going to continue. In Portland, Mike Benner for KGW News. Of course, there's some big questions following everything that happened at the Capitol today. One of them being what may or can happen to President Trump during these final two weeks in office. There are some calls now for impeachment or invoking the 25th Amendment. But what is actually on the table? Here's Jason Puckett with our Verify. Can the vice president invoke the 25th Amendment? According to our Congressional Research Service report, Section 4 of the 25th Amendment allows the vice president to, quote, assume the powers and duties of the office as acting president. Now, it only requires that the vice president have approval from the majority of the cabinet, but if the president challenges, then two-thirds of Congress would have to approve. So technically, yes, the vice president can invoke the 25th Amendment. But it's never happened in U.S. history, and that same Congressional Research Service report indicates that the amendment was, quote, not intended to facilitate the removal of an unpopular or failed president. That was Jason Puckett reporting. And as for a possible second impeachment, Oregon Representative Earl Blumenauer is calling for it to happen. And he's one of several Oregon lawmakers condemning the president and what we saw today. Catherine Cook reports. We saw today an effort by domestic terrorists to try to punch our democracy to the ground. Back on the Senate floor after a day for the history books, Senator Ron Wyden Wednesday night blasted members of Congress still intent on questioning the results of the 2020 presidential election. The domestic terrorists roaming the halls just a few hours ago, I've been done that this debate is actually going forward. Disappointed uh, in some of my fellow countrymen. From his office, Representative Kurt Schrader shared his response to extreme Trump supporters storming the Capitol. I mean, what went through your mind when you realized truly the gravity of what was happening? Well, a little disbelief, to be honest. I mean, this is the party of law and order. Uh, they were concerned about the Portland protests, you know, uh, I give him some credit there, you know, that, that turned violent also and, and un unfortunately obscured a very legitimate BLM concern. Uh, and much the same happened here. It's so interesting. They're two, two sides of the same coin. They don't see that, you know, the far left or far right that just don't understand the democratic process. Hours removed from the massive security breach, Congresswoman Suzanne Bonamici released this video message sharing her frustration with the president over what happened. It's time for him to resign or to be removed from office. This is completely unacceptable that he has encouraged uh, the, these acts of violence and this terrible, awful, terrifying uh, takeover of the Capitol here today. Representative Earl Blumenauer took that notion further, declaring support for articles of impeachment against Donald Trump. He also urged Vice President Pence and cabinet members to use the 25th Amendment to remove Trump from office. In a statement, he said, the president of the United States sent a mob of domestic terrorists down Pennsylvania Avenue to attack and take over the U.S. Capitol in order to stop the certification of an election that he lost badly. This is really a, a, an attempted coup. From a secure location, Senator Jeff Merkley spoke with NBC while waiting to reconvene. Really, the hooligans who uh, sought to dis disrupt the actions today uh, have failed to do so. We will complete our work tonight. I can honestly tell you this is not how I planned on spending the third day of being a congressman. But Oregon's newly sworn in Republican Congressman Cliff Bentz was among those who called for an investigation into the 2020 presidential election. I think the answer here is we need to show people that they are being heard. He also condemned the attack on the Capitol. You cannot have a, a government when you have uh, that kind of thing happening. Catherine Cook, KGW News. President Trump supporters gathered at state capitol buildings across the country today, including in Salem. Counter protesters also showed up. At one point, police declared an unlawful assembly with one arrest so far for harassment and disorderly conduct. Current and former GOP state lawmakers were also there today, giving speeches to rile people up. What we're being accused of today is the same thing that the, our forefathers were being accused of when they signed their names to the Declaration of Independence. 
They pledge their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor. What are we willing to do? Police temporarily closed down streets as well, but reopened things around 4 o'clock today when the crowd started to leave. At the Washington State Capitol in Olympia, some Trump supporters broke through the gate in front of the governor's mansion. Governor Jay Inslee was in the residence when this happened, but was taken to a safe location. The group did not get into the mansion or damage any property. We have some breaking news for you tonight in downtown Portland, where an anti-police -pro uh, protest has once again ended in vandalism. The group has smashed windows at several stores near Pioneer Place Mall, including a Starbucks and a bank. Earlier tonight, police say that they were trying to break into the Multnomah County Courthouse as well. The crowd was about 50 people at one point. Some are still out, and in the past 10 minutes, Portland police did declare an unlawful assembly. In contrast to much of what we saw today, one group rallied for peace in Beaverton today. They say they demonstrated to call for nonviolence in Washington, D.C. and beyond. This is a weekly vigil, and tonight the focus was on the peaceful transfer of power. The, what's needed for evil to succeed is for good people to do nothing. So we had to do something today to speak out and say we want peace, nonviolence, democracy. Trust our democracy. Some members of this group say they've been demonstrating since the beginning of the Iraq war. A developing situation in Tigard where officers were involved in a deadly shooting. It happened by Southwest Hall Boulevard and Bonita Road. Not many details yet, but we do know that a man is dead and that no officers were hurt. Police say that there was no threat. There is no threat currently to the public. We're going to update you when we learn more.